Was this a consistent experience? Yes, the food's really good. No, the food's not good. Maybe the cast did really good that night, but I've never seen them do good again afterwards. I imagine the ship's really gonna grow on me and I'm gonna go, you know what? This is a really cool ship. Hey everybody, it's Brandon, The Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend. And I am here on my new home ship, the MSC Magnificent. Now, when you go every weekend, you're constantly looking for where's your next move gonna be? Where's your next weekend cruise gonna be? And from the beginning of last year, I saw some fantastic deals on MSC on their weekend sailing with the Magnificent and I have jumped on her. And I will be here for probably about 10 different sailings. So I paid all in probably $300 her sailing is what it's going to average out to, and most of them are going to have $50 or $75 of onboard credit on top of that. So a super great deal, and so I booked it, and so I made MSC my home ship. I am on my very first sailing on her, and I think I've got three more months worth of weekends that I'm going to be here. And so I wanted to share with you all my initial impressions of the MSC Magnificent. So the first thing, how's the food here? So MSC gets grilled for their food. I've seen you all in the comments. I know that it's been an issue. I will say that, you know, it's something that I stay very hesitant of because I have seen the comments and people talking poorly about it. I will say here on the Magnificent, the buffet has been the shining glory. I have really enjoyed the buffet more than I should. The food on the buffet, the things that I can get there, it's healthier, it's a better quality. There's more options. Like it's just all around a really good buffet. The place where I had a little bit of a shortcoming, I did do the main dining room last night. So for those solo cruisers out there, MSC will automatically, if you come on a solo cruise, place you at a solo table. So if you don't want to do that, make sure you're going to the maitre d' and asking them to move your table. So I sat with a group of other people traveling by themselves. The menu in the main dining room was kind of lackluster, like did not love the menu. I got a sweet potato soup, which was really good. There was a gumbo on there um, that didn't have that much rice. The sweet potato soup was good. But then when you got to the entrees, that's where I felt it really lacked a little bit. So grouper was the main thing. And that's what most people got was grouper with a salsa on it. And honestly, it didn't have a lot of taste to it. And then I had two desserts to make up for it, which was a cheesecake and key lime pie. The two desserts were good. So if I had to say that there was a weakness, it'd be in the entree section of their main dining room. This is again, me going there only one time. So we'll see how that winds up playing out. When we switch over and talk about the entertainment on this ship, I have been really impressed with the MSC Magnificent's entertainment. So it is a weekend cruise. Traditionally, I'm used to, you know, one or two shows by singers and dancers, maybe just one, and then we're gonna have headliners for the other ones. In this case, the singers and dancers are doing all three nights, which honestly, I kind of like. I've seen a lot of headliners these days. I don't care for a lot of them because they're not always my style. There's some that are really good and they're all extremely talented. I really do like the singers and dancer shows. The first night here, Friday night, they did We Will Rock and it was amazing. Like the music was really, really good and it felt like you were truly at a concert. The way that they engaged the audience, they engaged the crowd, it felt like I was at a concert. This is one of the situations, I think one of the few times that I started in the back of the room. I couldn't remember if I liked this show or not. And as soon as they started, I got up and I went to the front of the room so that I could get a better view um, and be able to watch the show. So it was super good. Last night they did uh, a tribute to Elvis, singers and dancers once again. And honestly, I'm not a huge Elvis fan. So this one I left early, but they did an amazing job performing. The screen behind them is like an LED screen, which was really cool to bring it to life. The costumes were good. And if you are an Elvis fan, you will really enjoy this. Tonight they're doing another show. So I'm gonna go sit in and check it out. And they're gonna have a comedian tonight in one of their lounges. Let's talk about the ship spaces now and some of the decor that's around here. So if you've been on an MSC sailing, or seen some of my full walking tours of the Davina, maybe you've seen it of the seaside, their decor is very different than other any other cruise line. It is dark for the most part. It's a lot of mirrors. If you can see in here, I've got a mirror here, a mirror there, a mirror there. It is a room of mirrors. So if you like mirrors, your stateroom, you're gonna be in good shape on MSC. So this one doesn't have that same black and marble that I saw on the seaside, but it has more prints, animal prints specifically. Even one of their rooms, their larger rooms, is called the Tiger Bar. It is a massive room with tiger print all on the floor, all up the walls. The prints here are, they give me a headache a little bit. They are very print forward, if you will. And so I'm still processing if I like those, I'm sure it'll grow on me and it's gonna be absolutely fine. Walking around the ship, the main floors that you're gonna be concerned with are deck six and deck seven. That is where they have most of their bars, most of their things that you can do around the ship, the common areas, if you will. 
So deck six, that's where you're gonna have a lot of your bars, places to hang out. You have live music going the entire night, which is fantastic. Side note, while I'm on that, in all of these venues, they normally have between three and four different live shows that you can go. So if you like live entertainment, live music, MSC is a really good fit for that because they've got a variety playing all throughout their ship, even on this smaller ship. And so deck seven is then gonna be where you have one specialty restaurant. So not thrilled with the one specialty restaurant. It is the Asian restaurant Oriental is um, the one that's here. And the reason I say that is because with the diamond status that I have, I've matched into the MSC Voyager Club program, which is their loyalty program. And I get one complimentary meal at a specialty restaurant, even for a weekend sailing. Shame they only have the Oriental one because I was really looking forward to trying the butcher's block or butcher's cut, their steakhouse, but I've not been able to go there just yet. Let's talk about the pools on board this ship. I think when I think of the layout, this is another thing you want to consider. And this is one of those places where I had to learn that this was a smaller ship. There's a few places that I've went, huh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be because for whatever reason, I thought the MSC Magnificent was a larger cruise ship. She is not that. So she is about 95, 98,000 gross tons and has max capacity of about 3,200 guests. So if you are a Royal Caribbean fan, that is the equivalent of like a Radiance class ship. It's just a wee little bit bigger than a Radiance ship. So Brilliant, Serenade, Radiance. And so you kind of know what the size is here. And one of the places that I had a disappointing moment, I guess just because my expectation was wrong, was I wanted more pools. When I was on the seaside, I really enjoyed the layout of that ship and the way that they had their pools designed. It was a really fun environment. I came here, there's one pool out in the open, if you will, and then they've got their solarium style pool, and that's about it. There's not a lot of pools. But then I kept walking around and they were never busy. Why? Because there's only 3,000 people here, and I think there's probably less than that on this sailing. But it's a small ship. They don't need five different pools. This ship doesn't need them. They also have about five different hot tubs that you can choose from. Um, and they have not been that full on this ship either. This ship is not kid friendly. There's no slides. There's no activities, things of that nature. They've got some activities and a section for smaller kids. But I'd say like the two to five year old range. But after that, it kind of wavers off a little bit on what those offerings are gonna be. So there's not been a ton of kids on here either. One of the downsides I'll say to the pool, and this one bothers me more than it should probably, is the chairs in the pool. They are not comfortable. I don't know who designed them, but it doesn't sit well. It is a very uncomfortable chair and it doesn't have a multi-lean approach. It is way too far back of a lean for me to be comfortable. Like I don't enjoy those chairs. So if you're coming on the MSC Magnificent, you wanna sit in chairs for a long period of time, I would encourage you to look at the Aria level of traveling with MSC because they've got an Aria section here which has nicer chairs. It's also gonna come with two more hot tubs and its own dedicated bar up there. Now let's talk about everybody's favorite area Area, the gym on this ship. The gym on this ship is just sad. She is a sad ship. So sad gym. So when I walked in there, I was like, oh, there's not much to do in here. I mean, if you want to do some cardio, you've got like five treadmills, you've got like three ellipticals, and you've got a weight set that goes up to about 22 kilograms or 50 pounds. Not a lot. Um, it's also in a really bad location. So the bridge, directly below the gym. So when I was putting weights down the other day, they don't have any mats or anything. So when I was putting weights down, the staff captain particularly and said, hey, we need that guest to, to knock that out. That's not fun down here. But just a really odd location that you can't get a true workout in. Like I was thinking if I was jumping rope or jumping up and down, you still will need a mat or pad underneath you, whatever you're doing. The slightest echo apparently sets off the bridge. Hi Bridge, sorry, that was me. From there, you're looking at the thermal spa. So I do get a one hour free treatment in their Aria thermal spa when I am on the cruise ship. And I must say, this is a really good experience. I went in there for a full hour. Normally I don't stay a full hour because I get hot and I get bored and so I head out. But today, it's not a very fun day in January. And so I was like, you know what? Let me go to the gym and then do the thermal area. And it's really nice. So it's got three different hot tubs all at different levels. So I was able to find one that I could stay in for a while. It's got two steam rooms in it. They are very large. One of them was not that hot. The other one I found was really, really nice. And they've got two dry saunas as well. So this is a mixed gender place. So one thing that I had to learn on MSC and 
apologies, I didn't always know this, is you need to wear your bathing suit when you go into the MSC's thermal spa because it is in mixed company. Um, and just to be polite and respectful, you never know when those towels might slip. I will also say that, you know, the itinerary has been really good. We went to Nassau yesterday, fine. I did not get off the ship this time because I wanted to make some videos. And then we are at Ocean Key. I love Ocean Key. I didn't get off today. I'm kind of disappointed in that because the weather is just not great. But fast forwarding, a few of the trips here are gonna be Key West and Ocean Key, which I'm super excited to be taking a cruise ship into Key West, into hopefully Mallory Square down there. It is a beautiful area, plenty to do in Key West. So I'm excited for those as well. So I have been here for literally two days now. I got on board. Friday at four o'clock, I'm gonna be getting off tomorrow morning, probably around 7.30, 8 o'clock. And my thoughts are probably gonna change. They're probably going to evolve. I imagine the ship's really gonna grow on me and I'm gonna go, you know what? This is a really cool ship. This is a really great ship. I'm loving the size, by the way. Only 3,000 passengers is really nice, even though I'm not getting some of those nicer amenities. But it just goes to show that I've never met a cruise ship that I really don't like. At the end of the day, I'm confident that I'm gonna like this one. I'm excited to bring you all along on that journey with me as I show you more of MSC and the MSC Magnificent. So if you want to see how I booked this for $300, make sure you're checking out this other video here on what I did in order to make that happen, to make this sailing be really affordable. All right, everybody, this is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, hoping to see you on a weekend cruise soon.